Afghanistan on the verge of a real bad collapse. Can we blame United States of America? My name is Sevi Kazmi and you are watching Conflict Times. Afghanistan, a country which is facing a humanitarian crisis, where thousands are sleeping rough on the streets and where children are begging for food and finding food scraps in bins. Most media outlets are not covering this major issue. So today I'm going to tell you exactly what is happening on the ground right now in Afghanistan. Today, I want to talk about the following topics in the following order. Number one, the origin of Taliban's and what are they now? Number two, what happened to Afghanistan on 15th of August? Number three, the current humanitarian crisis. Number four, the cut of US aid and US sanctions. Let's talk about the origin of Taliban and what are they now? The Taliban, which means students in the Pashto language, fought alongside the Afghan Mujahideen against the Soviet occupation in 1980s. The Mujahideen received weapons and money from the US as part of its policy against its Cold War foe. They emerged in the early 1990s in northern Pakistan following the withdrawal of Soviet troops in 1989 from Afghanistan. It is believed the predominantly Pashtun movements first appeared in religious seminaries, mostly paid for by money from Saudi Arabia, which preached a hardline version of Islam. The promise made by the Taliban was to restore peace and security and enforce their own version of Sharia and own version of Islamic law once they are in power. In 1995, they captured the province of Herat, bordering Iran and exactly one year later they captured the Afghan capital Kabul, overthrowing the regime of President Burhanuddin Rabbani. He was one of the founding father of the Afghan Mujahideen that raised the Soviet occupation. By 1998, the Taliban were in control almost 90% of Afghanistan. The Taliban were popular with the people because they stamped out corruption curbing lawlessness and making the roads and areas under their control very safe. They introduced or supported punishment in line with the strict interpretation of Sharia law, such as public execution of convicted murderers and adulterers, and amputation of those found guilty in theft. Men were required to grow beard and women had to wear the old coverings of burqas. They banned television, music, cinemas, and disapproved of girls aged 10 and over going to school, especially girls in secondary schools. They were accused of various human rights and cultural abuses. The US invaded Afghanistan in 2001. After the Afghanistan refused to hand over Al-Qaeda's leader, Osama bin Laden, who was responsible for 9-11 attacks in the US. US stayed in Afghanistan for 20 years more than 40,000 people have been killed and in that time spent more than one trillion dollars. Today the country still remains poor and there is no infrastructure. But what happened on 15th of August? On 15th of August last year, it took just 10 days for Taliban to take over the country of Afghanistan. And last year, the Taliban administration has been in control of the country. The Taliban government is not officially recognized by international communities so far and is known as the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan, IEA. During these 10, 10 days, thousands of Afghani families abandoned their homes and went to the capital Kabul in hope to leave their country somehow. Others fled across the border to neighboring countries and anything to try to escape to from Taliban. It was horrific scenes at Kabul airport when we saw the video of Afghani people at the airport trying to flee and seeing people holding on to American airplane as it looked off down in runaway. Many people fell hundreds of meters to their dead death trying to, to flee the country. And just a few days before American forces withdrew from the country, an ISIS terrorist was responsible for a suicide bomb blast in the Afghanistan airport, the lone suicidal bomber cleared 13 US service members and more than 
170 Afghanistan's people seeking to flee the country. President Ashraf Ghani fled the capital, Afghan president at that time, with a reported $150 million in helicopter and has been living in Abu Dhabi in comfort, while millions of Afghani people have since faced starvation. An investigation by the U.S. government is currently ongoing into the collapse of Afghani government and the alleged stolen money, but the fraud allegation is still ongoing. The current human crisis, which is very important, a third point, a country of more than 40 million people has relied heavily on foreign aid for the last 70 years. In 2022, the people are currently facing a hunger crisis, an economic crisis and a health care system which is collapsing. It has been only five months since the Taliban took over the country, cut U.S. aid and withdrew their troops from the country. It's more than 22 million people, half of the country, are experiencing extreme hunger, poverty, and children are severely malnourished with many forces into child labor. Thousands of people have lost their jobs and many families are living day to day. Pakistan is trying to help them, but people have no salaries and families are unable to afford food in the cold winter months. Children are dying from preventable childhood illnesses and diseases. Only children under the age of 12 years of age are allowed to go to the school. Older girls have not been able to attend secondary school since the 15th of August, and this is what the media was reporting. Now we'll talk about the cost of U.S. aid and U.S. sanctions. Now U.S. made a decision that time to stop aid to the country, and on top of that, the U.S. froze much of 9.4 billion in Afghan currency reserves in Afghanistan Central Bank in August, a move which has functionally cut the country off from many foreign banks and left the Central Bank of Afghanistan unable to access the reserves and shore up the country's cash flow. This was really inhuman. Now at the end, I would just like to conclude it in my opinion, the Taliban's government should not be running the country as these last five months has demonstrated their incapacity to govern. They're not trained. The Taliban's rebels were so keen to take over the country, but the last five months has been very difficult for Afghani people, as more than half of the population are starving. And that includes Taliban's members, who cannot provide food for their own families. So there are too many issues in Afghanistan right now to solve. There is an economic issue, there is a no cash, malnutrition can be seen, in most children and there is a rise in preventable diseases, a health system which is completely collapsed and finished. And I believe the international community should step in and provide humanitarian aid to Afghanistan as they have already been doing for the last 70 years. America sought to transform Afghanistan for two decades, but in the end, it withdrew its troops and left the country. Many veterans, diplomats, journalists, aid workers, and many others have dedicated a large portion of their life to transform this country. But in the end, all it took was 10 days for the Taliban to seize the control of country. This tells you how fragile the system was built by Americans. But this is the time the entire world has to look for Afghani people, not Taliban. People need help. So I think it's a time for all of us to look into and say, hey, they are still people. You're watching Conflict Times. My name is Sebi Ghazmi. I'll see you next time.